Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing some NA, which is Narcotics Anonymous programming. So this program of recovery, the AANA programs, the anonymous programs, uh, the only thing, the only requirement to be a part of these programs is the desire to quit drinking or doing drugs or uh, doing the things that got you in this place in the first place, right? Got you here, seeking this, this program. So most of us do not have to think twice about any of this. We know that we're an addict. We know that we're an alcoholic. Our whole life and thinking was centered around drugs or drinking in one form or another. So the getting and using and finding ways and means to get more is commonplace for us, or was. We live to use and use to live. We, we live to drink and drink to live. So very simply, an addict or alcoholic is a man or woman whose life is controlled by drugs. We are people in the grip of a continuing and progressive illness whose ends are always the same, jails, institutions, and death. And when you think about this, my friends, honestly, truly, the only ends that will come from this progressive disease is death, you'll end up in jail, or you'll end up in an insane asylum or, or a mental hospital. I'm, I'm serious. Those are the only three options we have if we stay addicted to drinking or drugging. So those of us who have found this program do not have to think twice about this question. Who is an addict? Because we know Addicts are people who use any mind-altering or mood-changing substance that causes a problem in their life. Addiction is a disease that involves more than just the use of drugs. So some of us believe that our disease was present long before the first time we used, and that would be a fair uh, assumption because some of us are predisposed and have uh, genetic predispositions to, to addiction, especially alcoholism. So most of us did not consider ourselves addicted before coming into this program. The information available to us came from the misinformed people, right? So as long as we could stop using for a while, we thought we were okay. We looked at the stopping and not using. As our addiction progressed, we thought of stopping less and less. Only in the desperation did we ask ourselves, could it be the drugs or drinking? We did not choose to become addicts. We suffer from a disease that expresses itself in ways that are antisocial and that makes detection, diagnose, and treatment quite difficult. Our disease isolates us from people except when we were getting, using, and finding ways and means to get this, this drug or drink. So hostile, resentful, self-centered, and self-seeking, we cut ourselves off from the outside world, and anything not completely familiar became alien and dangerous, including sobriety, right? Our world shrank and our isolation became our life. We used in order to survive. We drank in order to survive. It was the only way of life that we knew. Some of us used or drank or misused and abused drugs and still did not consider ourselves an addict or an alcoholic. Through all this, we kept telling ourselves, we can handle it, we got it. Our misconceptions and misperceptions about the nature of addiction included visions of violence, street crime, dirty needles, and jail. Amen, that's exactly what it does. That's, that's what my envisions. That's what I envision when I think about addiction. So when our addiction was treated as a crime or a moral deficiency, we became rebellious and were driven deeper into isolation. So some of the highs uh, felt great, but eventually the things that we had to do to continue using reflected desperation. We were caught in the grips of our disease. We were forced to survive any way that we could. We manipulated people and tried to control everything around us. Sound familiar? Maybe we're even experiencing those people in our lives right now. You know somebody who's being manipulative and trying to control everything. They lie, they steal, they cheat, they sell themselves. We were there. I was there once. I know what it's like. We had to use these drugs or drinking regardless of the cost. The failure and fear began to invade our lives. One aspect of our addiction was our inability to deal with this life on life's terms. We tried to drugs and drink and combinations of drugs to cope with a seemingly hostile world. We dreamed of finding a magic formula that would solve all our ultimate problem of drinking. The fact was that we could not use any mind-altering or mood-changing substance, including marijuana and alcohol, successfully. Drugs ceased to make us feel good. At times, we were defensive about our addiction and justified our right to use, especially when we had our legal prescriptions to do so. We were proud of that, sometimes uh, illegal and often bizarre behavior that typified our using. We forgot about the times when we sat alone and were consumed by fear self-pity we fell into a pattern of selective thinking we only remembered the good drug experiences so we justified and we rationalized the things we did to keep from being sick or going crazy we ignored the times when life seemed to be a nightmare and we avoided the reality of our addiction so higher mental and emotional functions such as conscious and the ability to love were sharply affected by our use of drugs living skills were reduced to animal level our spirit was broken the capacity to feel human was lost this seems extreme but many of us have been in this state of mind. 
We were constantly searching, searching for that answer, that person, that place or a thing that would make everything all right. We lacked the ability to cope with daily living. And as our addiction progressed, many of us found ourselves in and out of institutions. So we'll leave that there today and we'll probably pick that up maybe tomorrow or the next day. Um, I want to bring you guys a different message coming from different literature, giving you guys a different perspective uh, of what we can do in this program of WE. I am not fully affiliated with any group or any uh, one uh, organization, recovery group or anything. I really just kind of look at it in total and I, I grab what I can and I use what I can in my recovery. And a lot of it has been based off the formula that I found in the 12 steps. Now I see Taylor Kavanaugh and other people talking about universal laws and, and, and this and that. And I, I'm like, whoa, this is exactly what uh, we need to do in our life. We need to find a step-by-step -step process or a formula that we can apply to our life that's going to help us. And if it works, work it. Uh, but I would say the main thing uh, you need to do, and I know it's 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 going to involve the G word, but you got to have a relationship with a higher power. You don't have to call it God. You don't have to call it any. Just call it a power greater than you that is looking out for you. And that's where you're going to begin the process of working the 12 steps. Because A, or one, admitting that we're powerless and that our lives become unmanageable is the first step. We have to admit that we're, we're, we're done, we're toast, we're, we're defeated. But in that defeat, you're going to build yourself up and you're going to get back up on that ladder and you're going to keep going onward and upward, my friend. I want you guys to stay inspired, be inspired, and uh, look at today as a, as, a, as a new opportunity to get it right. All right? God bless you guys. Welcome.